In amongst all the stuff that I bought from Don Hill was this engine, which is a really good engine. It's a three bearing engine. And if you look in uh, Chris Draper's book, he, a uh, book about Samson's, you can see that they use this engine to show what a three bearing engine looked like. And you can even see the number 137. And, uh, and it's, in, it's in brilliant condition because these engines, they have a centre main and very often this bit fits loosely in there and people, you know, do all sorts of funny things. They drill a hole through there and a hole through there. They put a piece of rod in here with two little screws and cut that and squeeze that lot together. Well, I mean, to be honest, once that's done, it ain't very good. People have been known to build it up with weld. They've been known to do all sorts of things. But the thing is, I remember when I was young, and people used to come and see my dad, who was obviously a great Samson man, and people used to over rev them, and they used to be silly with them. Well, you know, when you've got something that's this old and, and lovely, I don't think you should... You know, when I raced a Bugatti, I used to race it, and I used to, and people used to think I was cheating. But it had a brand new engine, so if it had blown up, it wouldn't have done any harm. There was no numbers on it. So I think when you've got something with numbers on, you've got to use your loaf. But anyway, so that's the crankcase. Then, in amongst the stuff was a cam box. And it obviously sat in the rain, and this whole corner, that corner completely, was gone. Where obviously something had dripped on it. Anyway, I took it to a firm down near Silverstone, not Silverstone, Goodwood. Um, and they built it up with laser welding and it doesn't get hot. You could literally, after, when they're welding it, you could touch it almost and it, and it wouldn't burn you. So anyway, so they built that bit up completely and then we brought it back and we brought it out to get it nice and round again and then made an oversized one of those, which is what the cam follower slides up and down in. So anyway, so we're now going to be able to reuse that. So then the next thing, I found in amongst the stuff, I mean this sounds like a tall story, but I can assure you it's absolutely right. In amongst the stuff were these pistons. Now I can remember my dad owning these pistons. He never got round to putting them in an engine, but they were, they were sort of a thing of beauty, you know, they're a lovely set of salts and pistons. And they were made by a company called, um, Mar well, they were called Martlet Pistons. And they were made by a company called Brooklyn's Engineering Company Limited, obviously at Brooklyn's. And I remember these pistons. So my dad sold all this stuff 50 years ago, and it's all gone along, and it's gone from one bloke to another, broken on a shelf to another shelf. And then I bought all this stuff off old Don before he died, and in amongst it, there was these market pistols. So I thought, well, I'd love to use them. So I'm going to use them. So anyway, in amongst it all, there was a brand new cylinder block. Which somebody has obviously had made. And I looked at it. And it's got this lump on the bottom. Well, you think, well, somebody's done that. They were obviously going to make a compression 16 to 1 and supercharge it at 25 psi. I mean, it's got a lovely little light aluminium block and crankcase that's all been made beautifully. And pattern making is exceptionally good. In fact, looking at that thing, I've cleaned it up a lot. And I've cleaned lots of Bugatti engines up. And I reckon the pattern making at Samson was better than what it was at Bugatti. And Bugatti was a lot simpler anyway, because it was just a old square lump, more or less. But anyway, so this is a new cylinder block that I've made, look. Which is kilograms, do we know? Bottom one. Bottom one. So what's that? 15 kilograms. Yeah, 16. Right. This is a standard block. Yeah, it's six kilos lighter. So, my problem is, it's against my principles to put that on a lovely Samson engine. I just can't do it. 
Right, so in amongst old um, dog <coughs> stuff was this cylinder block. And it had studs in it, and they were really in there. I mean, I had to heat it up and bang them and put stuff on them. And, you know, and I really persevered, and I managed to get them all out. I mean, it's not perfection by any means. And then, unfortunately, it's had a right amateur job of welding around the bottom, just here. So anyway, I'm going to clean it up. And the good thing is, looking amongst all the blocks I've got, this one will just bore out to take these pistons. So I can use the pistons that have been in and out of the family for probably 50 years, probably more than 50 years actually, because I'm 80 and I was about 15. So what's that? You're, you're the one who went to school. 65. 65 years they've come back. Anyway, I'm going to bore it out and put them in there. Now, obviously, it's got a very thin bottom. It's been repaired. But, I mean, you just got to treat it with a bit of sense. So, I'm going to rub it flat, which I do with everything. Very rarely do we machine anything because it takes too much off. I actually rubbed that flat. I did that on, the, on here by moving it up and down and got that nice and flat. So this is, so that's going to be used. I bought some new camshafts from Mickey Hudson, who um, has them made. And um, so that's it really. And I've got a cylinder head, which is quite good, but it was in actual fact a four push rod one with the holes. But the only difference is the holes. So I'll, I can fill it up if I have to. I might get a cylinder in the meantime. But it's going to need new valve guides. And obviously the valve seats are all going to need cutting. I don't believe in putting hardened valve seats in. All that nonsense about recession of the seats because it hasn't got lead in and all that. I'm sure it's all very proper, but it's never given me any trouble. I mean, I ain't going to do 100,000 miles and I'm not going to drive it down the motorway pulling 6,000 revs. So all the, all, the, all the Bugattis, there's 35, you can't put valve seats in them. So you have to put up with it. And I've never seen any one of them go wrong, so I ain't going to worry about that. It'll just be put nicely, new guides, new valves, not extra strong springs or anything like that. And with this poor old cylinder block, which has had a right old life, I should just drive it sensibly, and then I'll keep my eye on it and progressively try a little bit harder and a little bit harder. If it don't go wrong, I'll know whether I can drive it flat out or I'll have to drive it sensibly. And if it goes wrong, well, I'll have to take the cylinder block off and get another one. But I can't bring myself to use that. See, if, if you machine the bottom thinner to get the weight off, obviously it drops everything down. So then you'd have to have special pistons made. So I don't know, you know, you never know. I might, I might be wrong. I might drive this up the road and tick it over, it breaks. And then I'll say, oh dear, we'll have to do something. And I might find I ain't so bloody clever as what I think I am. But to me, that just looks over the top. On that lovely, lovely, lovely crank case. That the pattern makers have made a fabulous job of. There's nothing on that you can, that is a thing of beauty in my opinion. It's a pity about that hole there, but if you look in Chris Draper's book, you can see that hole. But I mean, what a lovely thing. So anyway, that's going to get used. So what's now, the other problem I've got is the crankshafts. Cut that for a minute and I'll go and get it. What's the engine called on like that engine? So you got the same That's a Grand Prix Special engine. Whereas the other one, the two bearing engine, my dad always said the two bearing engine was a Grand Prix Bugatti. The Grand Prix Special was the three bearing engine. And the San Sebastian was the three bearing engine but supercharged, so it had a different block, different head, supercharger, very special engine. But it still used a three bearing crane. Now I'll put that some. Oh, here it is. Another little story here. This is for salts and people, really. A normal person probably wouldn't be slightly interested. But what happened was, in amongst the old Don Hill stuff, was this rusty old crankshaft. Well, I've cleaned it up and had it browned. It's only an old bearing. 
tuned it up, had it ground on the big ends, but unfortunately, this part of it that was rusty is all undersized, so you put the bearings on and they ain't no good. Put the timing gear on, sloppy. Put the front mode on, sloppy. And that one that just fell on the floor is the back one. But anyway, it's just as bad, sloppy, sloppy. So anyway, I've managed to find the firm and I've spoken to a good bloke. You know when you ring up a firm and a bloke goes, yeah, I know what you want, blah, 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 blah. And he did sound a real proper bloke. So I'm going to take a gamble and send it to them. And what they're going to do, they grind that down, chromium plate it, and then grind it so that this all fits. I forget the fit he said, actually, but I'm going to have to... Can you remember that, John? Um, it was a... No. No, I can't remember, but we'll have to ring him up and make sure, because he said he wanted me to put it on the order. Yeah. It was a something fit, so it's not interference, it's just a nice, proper fit, like this would have been originally. So hopefully that's going to re redo the crank. But the next thing... ...is the rods. This is a proper... Grand Prix Special San Sebastian Conrod, which is obviously looks like it's solid, but it's not. That hole there in the top of there goes right the way through there. So obviously that is machined. Now how good that finishes in that hole, I don't know, because I haven't checked. But they did have a habit of breaking. My dad, in fact, I remember as a kid, my dad take the white bits and it had a bit of tube slid over the top of there and brazed. These conrods came out with great lumps brazed on them. But they hadn't broken, but, you know, there's a good chance that'd break. So anyway, in amongst old Donnie and stuff was these rods that somebody's obviously made, eight section, nice and light. But unfortunately, they made the hole in there so there was no room to put any white metal in. So I rung up John Kirkby, very well known bloke for doing white metalling and what have you, he's been at it for years and years. So I said to him, how much metal can we get away with in there? You know, in other words, how thin we can make it. And I think he said a mill and a half from memory, something like that. But anyway, so we set this up in the mill and we bored that out with enough room to get the white metal in. So John Kirkby's done that. We're going to have to make some new small end bushes because obviously the um, pistons, gudgeon pins, will need a bush. So that's another little job we've got to do. So all in all, I think if we get that built up, that's already been done by old John, so that's good. That's all lovely and we've got things to put in there and we've got new cam followers that we got from Mickey Hudson. And Mickey Hudson gets them made, or got them made, by uh, Paul Smith. Not Paul Smith, the, the designer. <laughs> Paul Smith made these, which are absolutely beautiful. I mean, you know, it's a man in a shed again, made them. I mean, what a lovely job. So anyway, we're going to use them. And then we've got enough of those to do that. And that's it, really. And in amongst all the old stuff, I looked for a load of old gaskets, and in amongst them was a brand new one. So that's a bit of luck. So I use that. That is an original San Sebastian-type piston with a funny crown, and, 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 and they used to put a pin through there, through the rod, to hold the gudgeon pin in. In fact, we'll have a look, because I can't remember seeing a hole in there. Ah, oh, there it is, look. There's the hole. So what they did was, they put a, a something in there, either a taper pin or something, but a bit dodgy, really, holding the gudgeon pin in. But anyway, that's how they did it. And one of these cars did lap Brooklyn's at 140 miles an hour in 1920-something, so they must have been pretty good in their day. But because it's a bit like a Bugatti, all the bits are donkey's years old, and they're all worn out before we even get them. 
Um, and that's why, really, I'm, I'm a great believer in, I'm going to put all this old junk together. That was rotten, rusty. That's had a horrible repair. That had half the side missing. All the bearings dropped on there loosely. Um, pistons, I've known all them donkey's years. And what we're going to do, we're just going to put it all together. And when I drive it, I'll drive it very sensibly. I'll go a little bit faster, a little bit faster, and have a good look at everything. And if it stands up to it well, well, we just say, well, we can drive this as, not as hard as you like, but sensibly. So we've got a 1920-something engine with all original bits, a few modern-day repairs, because let's face it, that, up till quite recently, as far as I'm concerned, would have actually been TIG welded or something, and that would have all bent like a banana. And that was um, laser welded, and you could actually touch it. You know, and just welded it, you put your hand on it. So that wasn't hot at all. So all in all, I'm, that is the next Salkson engine. And as I slowly get the bits done, when I get this chromium plate and then it comes back, we'll make a video and I'll show you that. We'll get that forward to take those pistons, uh, and then slowly we'll put it together. We can't say we're going to do it all in a week, but, you know, salts and people are probably interested. And, and old Donnie was, you know, a diamond, really. I mean, he wrote that fabulous book that we've all read from cover to cover. In fact, I've only had one a little while, and it's almost worn out. Because I never worry about looking at books. I don't keep, I'm not keeping them for the next bloke. I'm using them for me. Um, and I think you'd be pleased to see all that lot as a running engine. This one... I bought from a man in France called Roger Dor, and that was soaking in diesel when I got it, so I can tell you how good it was. But anyway, I managed to put it all together, and uh, you know, it's all right, it turns nicely, and it didn't have one of those. So what I did was I built up the one that came with this engine, I built it up, put a little bit of metal on the end so that when it contracted like that, it was all right. But the only thing is, I couldn't alter the contraction on them very well. So what we did was, we just TIG welded it up a little bit. And then I filed it up. We did that on the mill. And, um, you know, it looks pretty good, I think. And that's going to go on that engine, because I didn't have one at all. In fact, when I got the engine from Roger Dore, I said to him, has it got a lid? And he looked at me like I was mad, as if they never have a lid. But anyway, it's got one now. So that's it. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll keep you in touch.